everybody. Come on in the room. Virtual pay party number five with the Shoe Chick Art Studio. You are in the right place. It is, what time is it? 59? Oh, six o'clock on the dot. We're on time. I got one person in here so far. We have lots of painters today. So come on in the room. So I have a lot of first timers here. So we're gonna let them, give them a little bit of time. Get all your materials together, have your playlist right, get your drink, and uh, we're gonna paint smooth. Oh, I should go like this. Look, Liza, that's kind of funny. Smooth <laughs> sailing. That is funny. <laughs> okay, so today, last time I had uh, Will Daniels, my lovely husband, my wonderful, lovely isn't a good term for a husband, huh? My handsome, strong husband uh, here yesterday. And today, um, I have my beautiful daughter, but I'm going to introduce her a little later. We're going to wait for everybody to get in the room. I hope you have all your tools together. That cup that you have should be halfway full of water. That's the only thing I didn't give you to paint today. I didn't give you water. I gave you everything else that you need except for the water. Liza, any comments? Everybody cool? Anybody ask any questions? Anybody uh, lost? More Alicia says that she, her and her hubby are here. Yeah. Kaylin Davis says hi. Hello, hello. Franklin waves. Okay, so everybody, let's see, we got 10 people in the room. So you have all your materials. I hope you have your little apron. We're going to go over the tools. I'm going to wait a little bit because I have a lot of new people here, which is fun. And I have a lot of return uh, painters. So in marketing, that's a really big, super big deal when somebody comes back again. So I guess I'm doing a pretty good job because... 90% of the people have come back to paint with me. Um, I had over 100 easels, and I have a, over 100 easels out in the community somewhere. So if you're not painting with me anymore, um, come drop your easel off to me. Like, text me and get it back to me, please and thank you. Because I want to make sure that the people that are painting have a total, complete kit so you can have the full experience of smooth sailing. I like that. You know you think that's corny, but that's golden. That's golden right there. Like they say in the movie business, that's golden. Okay, um, the Chardonnay that I'm drinking today, we're going to do that early because I don't really care if people miss that because I'm not getting paid for this. Um, actually, I have never tried it before. I just posted it moments ago. What is it called? Mall Valley Chardonnay. It's from Chile. And I haven't tried any Chardonnay from Chile before. That's the label. Liza was like, Chile, the restaurant? That doesn't sound exciting. I'm like, no, like Chile, the country in South America. But anyway, usually I'm already drinking. Well, I've had a couple sips before we get started. This time, this is a pure, authentic reaction to this wine because I've never tried it before. Dun, 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 dun. Isn't this exciting? With my favorite wine glass from Pure One. I might have to switch that up. Maybe I can get like somebody to sponsor me for wine glasses. Okay, I want to know what you're drinking. I try to talk a little bit in the beginning because once y'all get into the painting, I don't hear nothing. It's like crickets. And I have to keep talking and talking and talking. So this is the Chardonnay. First reaction. True, authentic reaction. Ooh, I like the smell. I like the aroma, the bouquet as we call it in the wine field there. Now, I'm not feeling, not very oaky, which I'm a big fan of the oak, you know that. Very fruity. Hmm. Let's see, I'm swirling around to see the body of the wine. Y'all know I'm like really into wine, right? So I'm looking at the legs, seeing if it's a, it's pretty full body wine here. Okay, here we go. We're going in. Yeah, it's okay. No, don't even, don't even think about it. Liza's 16, she's reaching like, let me try it. It's okay. Still, as far as the wine reviews, we got 17 people in the room. I think I have like close to 30 painters today, so I'm not going to wait for all 30, but anyway. Um, that wine, what I recommend it, a little dry on the finish. A little dry. Um, I don't know. Let me taste it again. Let me see. Yeah. I think I needed to try an Australian Chardonnay next time. That's what someone told me. Australian Chardonnays are really good. Okay, for those of you who are joining me and this is your first ever virtual paint party, let me tell you how, how it works. Um, 
This is how it works. For the low, low quarantine price of just $15, the paint party is usually $25. So this is really a great deal. Um, oh, we don't have our lights on, Liza. But it's great lighting today because it's only, let's see, let me turn the lights on. Ooh, okay. We didn't turn any of our lights on. I don't think we the lighting them. was good today. Okay, so yeah, the lighting is pretty good, but that made it a little bit better. I look a little shiny, but okay, this is how the <laughs> paint party works. At the low, low quarantine price of just $15, regular price of $25, you um, sign up. I usually re release the pictures on Monday. You click the link, you pay. Um, you text me or I text you or you inbox me or I inbox you and, and you, um, I send you my address of my studio in the fabulous downtown Las Vegas, which it was a beautiful day today. Um, and then you pull up curbside, text me, and I bring the materials to your car, put them in your trunk. That's simple. Join me on Facebook at 6 o'clock. That's how it works. Um, I give you an easel too, but I have to have the easel back, or you can buy the easel for the low, low price of just $10. And that's my cost, not even making any money on that. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this so um, we can have a good time. It's therapy, right? It's relaxing, it's therapeutic. I, originally I did it just to pay my rent, <laughs> but um, I'm finding out that um, it's been good for a lot of different people. So thank you for the texts and the emails and all that and telling me how it's helping you because you are helping me. Uh, my beautiful co-host here, the beautiful Liza Mae Daniels. Can you stick your head in here real quick and just say hi? She'll be filled in questions because I can't see this far. Hi, Liza. <laughs> She'll be looking at the comments and everything. If I'm going too fast or something, if you have a question, please feel free to chime in and we will um, address those. In that kit that you got, it was actually in a plastic bag. And that plastic bag is very useful. You can use it to cover up your tabletop or the floor so you don't get um, paint on your furniture. Um, we're painting with acrylic paint today. Wash very easily off of your skin, not so easily out of your clothes. You got a apron in there. If you put a little water on your hands, the apron fully opens up and it goes over your head to protect your clothing from um, the acrylic paint. It will wash out of your clothing, clothing if you address it right away. Um, if you don't address it right away, it pretty much is in there for good. So anyway, use your apron. Um, some of the other tools that you got, we'll talk about as we go along. So uh, without further ado, I hope you put the water in your paint cup there. We gonna get started. So I'm gonna flip this over, bring that. Sometimes I trace your canvases. If you were with me last night for the lollipop girl, it was actually traced, but this time we going all in, all blank. It's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. Okay, so don't panic. This is Paint Party 101, entertainment purposes only. Um, I am a self-taught artist. Those are some of my fabulous paintings up here in the background. Um, my objective here today is for you to have a good time and to introduce you to the world of art. I'm painting sideways, so my painting is not gonna look like this one. I'm gonna come pretty close, but it's not gonna look like that. Painting is, a, you know, your artwork is a reflection of who you are in this moment. So um, just have fun with it. If you want to do something different to your ship, I don't know what you would do, but if you want to do something different, um, of course, use your creative freedom. Do something different. Anything, Liza? Billy says, hey, Miss Angelique, how often? Hey, Billy. How often do you do this? <laughs> I'm week? trying to do this every Friday and Saturday. I started off just doing this on Saturdays, but then I thought, why not do it on Fridays and Saturdays? So Fridays is more of a girly painting, and then Saturdays are more of a family night. What I'm doing right now is I'm taking all the lids off my paint. So everybody that paid the $15 got a 16 by 20 blank canvas, got that apron, got the bag that it's in to protect your, um, you know, whatever you're painting on, your tabletop or whatever, you got an easel, and then you got a paint tray full of paints, okay? Um, I like packed all these myself, so I hope I included all the proper tools. I think you did. Oh, let's go over the easel real quick. Make sure your easel, for you beginners that are just joining me, make sure these bunny ears are sticking straight up or they'll stick, the, it, it'll leave, a, leave an imprint in the canvas. Make sure this third arm right here isn't fully extended so when you paint, it doesn't fall over because that would kind of sucks. Okay? So. The first thing I'm going to do, which you've probably done already if you've ever painted with me before, is that you've reached into your little handy dandy bag there and you've already pulled out your sponge brush. I do not typically paint with a sponge brush, but I wanted to give you a kit which was disposable. So everything in this kit is disposable except for my easel. So we're going to go right into our cup of water, little, probably halfway through, 
And we're going to put a light coat of water on our canvas. And for those of you who have painted with me a million times, you know why. We're doing this to activate the canvas. It's kind of like a primer. So that when we put that first coat of paint on there, it's not getting totally sucked up by the canvas. So we're just kind of activating the canvas so it's ready to accept paint. Some artists, they paint the canvas white, or sometimes they use something called uh, gesso, and they paint it with that, and it kind of absorbs, it makes a smoother surface. Um, so that's kind of a technique that you might want to try one day. You actually have enough paint, probably, to paint two of these paintings, because I don't know, I'm always like terrified that you guys are gonna run out of paint. So I always like overfill those little cups and things that you have. So practice makes perfect, right? So not only am I, and you can put too much water on this canvas. We don't want it dripping. Very light coat of water. I'm even doing the sides because I'm gonna paint the sides as well, okay? If you put too much water on your canvas, you're gonna reach into that little bag, you're gonna pull out that very, very absorbent Blue paper towel and maybe dab it a little bit. I didn't, I didn't put a lot of water on, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm just saying if you did. Okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do with smooth sailing, I know that's so annoying to you guys, but I think it's funny. <laughs> the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the background. So that little moonlight and everything and that horizon line and all that, I'm, I'm looking up here because I'm looking at my reference photo. Everybody got a reference photo in their kit. That's what we call that in the art world. That's for all you OCD people out there that are just going to be obsessive, compulsive, whatever, into creating your painting exactly like the one I have. Um, I've provided you with this so you can look to it. Um, and we're going to refer to it, not just because you might be obsessive and compulsive, because it's a helpful, helpful tool, okay? So I'm also looking down a little bit because right here I have the other photo right there. Um, okay. Any comments? Everybody cool, Liza? Everybody good? Okay. So how many people I got in the room, Liza? 25. 25. Okay, that's good. Some people are probably trying to paint on their own, so, or painting later. I'm going to watch the replay. Because you can watch the replay, and then I'll repost it on YouTube on, um, on Monday, okay? So you don't have to scroll through my whole page and all that to find it. Okay, so I'm going into my purple paint with the sponge brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify halfway in the canvas and I'm going to put a light line. I'm going to draw a light line. That's kind of called our horizon line. Okay, that's the horizon for the sun. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's kind of be nice if it's pretty much in the middle. Okay, and so what, now what we're going to do is we're going to work on doing that glow in the back. So if you have a lot of water on your canvas, again, if it's dripping, you want to wipe it off with the um, blue paper now. And then, um, if not, we're gonna go to the next step. The next step is we're gonna draw a circle for that sunshine in the back or the moonlight. I think it's the sun, it's not the moon, it's the sun. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna draw a circle and we're gonna go like maybe two fingers down and start. And we're gonna go right below that line. Just like that. Everybody got that? I try to keep things basic like in terms of shape. So it's a circle. I know y'all give me a circle. I would say on a scale of one to five, the difficulty of this painting, one being simple, five being super difficult, I'd say it's like a 2.5. I hope that makes you feel better. <laughs> okay, so good one. Renee says hello. Hey, Renee. Shaleen says hello, Angie and Liza from your Chicago oh, family. Yay, Chicago, Chi-Town in, Chi in the house. If you're not from Vegas, rep your city. Um, uh, we started at 6 o'clock now because my West Co my East Coast friend said it was a little too late for them. So that's why we're starting at 6 o'clock. And Mika okay. says, hey. Hey! Okay, so Mika. Oh, that's Tanya in Michigan. Hi, Tanya. Okay, so look. So now we're going to start working on the glow around the sunlight. I'm just doing half brush strokes here and there. Half brush strokes here and there. I'm going to do some at the top. And we're going to smooth them out and blend them in. I'm still working with the purple. I didn't even dip back into the purple. Y'all with me? Half strokes. And I'm saying half because I'm not going over fully around the circle. And then when I get to the corners, though, I'm going to fully paint the corners in with my purple. Y'all with me? And 
And then at the bottom, we're actually going to paint full across. Okay. The key is just a small amount of paint on your paintbrush. Is there a glare on my canvas? No, I think that's just a... It looks pretty good on Facebook. So I am, it's important that we use horizontal strokes when we're painting at the bottom, not vertical, because that's like the flow of the water. It wouldn't make sense if we were doing the paint, uh, the brush strokes vertically. So you want to kind of give the flow of the water, the feel of the water. Not totally opaque. I got a little bit of white coming through there. But a lot of purple covering it up. All the way down to the bottom. And I want to encourage you to take pictures as you go along because you're going to be shocked and amazed at your masterpiece. I promise you. Uh, I'm kind of playing around with the light a little bit. I'm going to turn on the back light again. Okay. I kind of like that. I want the emphasis to be off me and more on the, on the painting. Okay, got the bottom. Oh, and if your paint gets a little sticky or if you're not getting the coverage that you need, tiny, tiny bit of water on your paintbrush. Respecting that horizon line there. And I'm even painting on the sides a little bit. I'm going kind of fast, but I'm going to take a break, do some shout outs and let you guys get caught up. You can have a little bit of white showing through, but for the most part, I have mostly covered mine. And then while the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this glow a little bit more. And if you look at the glow, there's a lot going on. There's some pink, and there is a little bit of yellow. So I am going to, using my sponge brush, I'm going to go into my pink paint. I'm just putting a tiny, tiny bit on the tip of my paintbrush. And just like I did with the purple, I'm just doing some brush strokes, curving my brush, going around. with that pink. And since I'm working with pink on my brush, every time you're working with the color, you want to put it everywhere you want it so you don't have to rinse out your brush and all that stuff. So I have pink on my brush, so I'm going to put just a little bit of pink in the water here as a reflection. I'm doing a really light brush stroke here and there. Just totally random. And if you look at the reference photo, you can see it's like totally random. I just want to add a hint of pink here and there. Y'all with me? Say yes. I'm with you. Okay, cool. <laughs> Still not washing off my paintbrush because we got a lot of colors going on in here. I'm going to go into my yellow. And I'm going to go over my horizon line with a little bit of yellow. Now the yellow is very specifically placed around, a little around the glow. It's not really on the outside, it's really in the inside. Patty says with you and love this. Yay! Okay, and I'm gonna stop right there while you guys get caught up with that. So it doesn't look like much now. I really wanna highly encourage you to take some photos because you're gonna be shocked and amazed at your masterpiece. I feel like it's leaning back too much. I want it to be up more. It'd be awful if the whole thing fell apart. But <laughs> and, uh, Eliza's looking at me like, really? You want to do that? Okay. <laughs> okay, I want to do that. I don't know. I feel like it's on an angel. Okay, I'll stop messing with it. She's, her eyes are getting big, so I'm going to stop messing with it. <laughs> That's part of the fun of my TV. If it all fell over and I had to put it back up, that'd be kind of funny. Okay, so 
I got my purple down, I got my pink down, I got more purple, I got yellow, very carefully placed on the horizon line and around the glow of the sun. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna lighten it, we're gonna soften it up a little bit with a little water and a little white paint. That's how we're gonna soften it up. So um, I'm gonna wait a little bit for you to get that together. And then um, we're not gonna use the sponge brush anymore. We're gonna use the little blue handle brush that you have in your packet. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna go into my water, wet it a little bit, and then I'm gonna start blending some of these lines together. Kind of like when you're doing your eyeshadow, ladies. Guys, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm just adding a little bit of water, blending those lines so it doesn't look so stripy. And then I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of white paint on my paintbrush and a little bit of water and kind of blend these lines a little bit. Patty says, my girls and I will wash again later and send you pics of our masterpiece. Okay. Thanks and for that's, this. I'm going to take you, thank you, Patty. I'm going to take you 90% through this painting. And then the other 10% you're going to do on your own. And then you're going to post your masterpieces. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm softening the lines with the white paint and a little bit of water. Softening the lines. I don't want it to look so stripy. I'm even gonna go in the inside of this white and soften the line between the yellow and the white. I'm gonna put a little bit of white on top of this yellow. And while I have white on my paintbrush, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to the wall top. And you're gonna look at your reference photo and kind of play around with it a little bit. Where you want the white lines at. So the important thing is I don't want it to look too stripy. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit more water. I have white paint on my paintbrush. And I'm using the water and the white paint and I'm kind of blending it in a little bit. I want a little bit more yellow in my glow. So I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow and I'm actually gonna drag the yellow out so it doesn't look like such a stripy line. I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow in the middle, kind of dragging it out, but really kind of respecting the main circle part because I do want white to really come through on there. So just kind of play around with it a little bit. And since I have yellow on my paintbrush right now, I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow. I had a little drip there, so I'm wiping it off. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in the water. So between a little bit of water, a little bit of white paint, you're gonna blend it. And maybe you want a little bit more purple in the background. Maybe you don't like the way it blended a little bit. Just kind of play around with it. But at some point, we got to call it good because we got to start working on the ship. Okay? So I'm going to blend just a little bit more. I'm looking at my purple. I want more purple. When you're changing colors, you're going to swish your print brush around in the water. You're going to wipe it off on your paper towel. And let's say you're looking at your painting and you're like, I want more purple in my background. You're going to swish your brush around in the water, wipe it off on the paper towel, and you're going to put more purple in your background. Just like that. Or maybe you want more pink. I think they're really, you know, there are no mistakes. I always say that there are no mistakes. There's happy little accidents, as my Rosh used to say. <laughs> but um, there are no mistakes, but there are some like focal points to this painting. Like this is a really big focal point. So you wanna, you wanna make sure that you respect like at least a good circle of, of white in there. So, of course, you can drag some of the yellow through. Like, I'm going to go back into the yellow. I'm going to put some yellow here. And then I'm going to go wash out my brush a little bit more. I'm going to go to the white. Because I want to soften it up. Because I feel like it's looking kind of stripy. I don't want it to look stripy. 
So you gotta kind of work with that a little bit. We're pretty much done like down there and that's where the ship's gonna go. And by the way, I would say this is probably gonna be like a hmm, 50 minute session. We're all, we've already been painting 25 minutes. Can you believe that? Hmm. I know, it's like five, 25, six, whatever. Well, I don't know, 25 <laughs> minutes past an hour, I don't know what time it is. <laughs> okay, so we'll just have fun with that. Respecting that space right there. And also another big uh, point to make is that we really need to respect that yellow line right here. The horizon line. So I always tell people, you're not going to learn any fancy stuff with me. You're not going to learn perspective drawing or color theory. It's paint party one-on-one. -on -one. Just going to have a good time. And the more you paint, the better you get at it. Right? Right, right Angelique? It's hard when you're by yourself in the studio. I miss you guys. I can't wait till we can start having parties again. Because when we have parties in my studio, it's fun. Because we have music. You can bring your own. I have a really good playlist. And then you can bring your own wine, and we drink together, and we laugh together. Don't you guys miss those times? But until then, we're going to make the best of it. I'm also painting the sides of my um, canvas, so when you hang up your masterpiece, you won't need a frame. If you don't paint the sides, it'll look like unfinished business. <laughs> so make sure you paint the sides so you can hang your masterpiece up right away. Okay? So I want you guys to play around with blending, and I'm going to do some shout-outs. Um, to all the wonderful people that are joining, joining us today. So I have Holly. Holly is a new painter. And she painted, well, Holly, I think you painted with me today and yesterday. Or you painted two times because you bought two kits. So thank you for that. Tanya painted the lollipop girl yesterday. And she's painting again today. Thank you, Tanya, for painting with me so much. Sistine, you painted with me last week. And you're painting again with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cindy, thank you. Elysia, I got you to paint with me virtually. You've been to my studio, so thank you for painting with me today. She's going to paint the lollipop girl on her own by watching my YouTube, um, which will be up on Monday. Uh, both these will be up on Monday on my YouTube channel. Don't ask me what it is yet because I'm not that savvy. It took me an hour to figure out. No, it took me a day to figure out how to turn it into an MP3 file. It took me another day to figure out how to put it on YouTube. But I figured it out, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Kayla Davis bought three kits, so thank you. Hi, Kayla, you, to you and your two friends. Um, Lisa and Ethan, hi. Hope you're having fun painting with me. I'm looking forward to the pictures. Um, Krista, thank you for painting with me. Shoshana, thank you for painting with me. Um, Cassandra, Nancy bought two kits, so I don't know who you're painting, you and your hubby, Nancy, I don't know who you're painting with, but thank you. Um, Borlesia, thank you, girl. I always do that. Thank you, girl. Honey buddy, as you say, for um, for always supporting me. I appreciate you. Vanessa is a new painter, and she came in strong. She bought five kits. For us. So, Vanessa, thank you, and thank you to your four friends or your family members. Thank you so much. Leandra, thank you, girl. She bought four kits today. She's um, She came back. She was here yesterday, and she came back today for two more kits. So, I hope you all are having a good time. Twist Out Girl, Dyla, Dela. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but thank you for joining me. I know you came and painted with me um, at my studio before, so thank you for trying out the virtual paint party. And Angel is a new is a new uh, painter. She, I don't know how you connected with me, Angel. I think you just saw me on Facebook, on my Facebook Live, and decided to take a chance on me, so thank you. I hope you're having a good time. And then Hester. Hester came back again at the last minute and bought two kits, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Really, I appreciate you. Um, all this um, virtual paint party stuff, I just post on Facebook. Um, it's all word of mouth. I'm not running ads. I'm not doing nothing crazy like that. I'm just doing me and just painting. So I just want to encourage you all, if you have an idea and you wanted to go live or you were thinking about doing this or that, I can't think of a better time to do something like that. Like We have people's attention. People are at home. People are looking for fun stuff to do. People are looking for information. People are looking to be uplifted. So um, use your gift and serve. So I couldn't do this totally for free, but that I could do it for almost half price. So that's what um, my ministry is right now. So anyway, thank you, thank you. How are those glows? How is it coming along? Leandra, Leandra yeah. says that I miss your studio. Oh, thanks. And Nancy says yes, I'm painting with my Oh, hey, that's, it's couples night. A lot of people are paint with their hubbies. So maybe I need to do a couples night. 
Mary did a special painting. Oh no, I'm killing. I'm doing a lot. I'm doing the most right now. <laughs> As they say, I'm doing the most. So let me not make any promises that I can't keep, right? So okay, where are we at? We ready to work on the ship? So the next, um, okay. So at some point, you gotta call this gear because we have to. We're gonna use our chalk and we're gonna draw on the ship. But the thing is, this has to be dry. So at some point you gotta say, okay, I'm done with it. If you're not done with it, and I'll have to move on in the next couple minutes, you can catch up by watching the replay. Or um, if you have a blow dryer handy, you can blow dry. If you haven't really, we haven't really used this mixing tray. So you can use the mixing tray that you were supplied with. And you can fan your painting dry. Isn't that handy? But it has to be dry for us to go on to the next step. Excuse me. So the next step is um, doing the ship. So how are we going to draw the ship? I hope it's not um, too intimidating for you. If you look at the ship, really all it is, I'm going to, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to do this. If you look at the ship, it really is just a combination of shapes, right? It is a very big triangle, and that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to split that triangle in half. And then it is a rectangle, and if you really take a look at it, it's a rectangle with two little triangles on the side. And then those little strings for the sails, those are so random, you can put them anywhere. Okay? So relax. <laughs> I hope you relax. Okay? So my painting is fairly dry because I didn't put a lot of water on the background. I didn't use a whole lot of water when I was blending. And if you're not happy with your blending, you can go back to your blending a little later. And I say comment there, Eliza. Anything that I need to be concerned with? Uh, Elizabeth says it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> okay, so in your kit, you have a piece of chalk. And hopefully it's colored. I think the only person that didn't have colored chalk is Tanya. And Tanya, I'm sorry, you pick your kit up. You're like one of the very first people to pick their kits up. And I put white chalk in it. And I was wondering if you're going to be able to see the walk, the white chalk in this moon. So everybody else got colored chalk. So if Tanya, if you have a pencil, you might want to grab a pencil so you could draw the triangle for the, for the um, sailboat. Um, Everybody else, you should have a colored uh, piece of chalk. I love using chalk because it's very forgiving. And that means you can wipe it off with a paper towel and you're not going to see it if you make a mistake, right? So I want you to really look at your reference photo and look at where the main part of the boat um, is placed. And if you look at it, the bottom part of the boat in the boat itself is really in the middle part and to the right of the painting. So. I'm going to draw the middle part of the boat right here. I'm just going to extend a straw, and that's going to be the bottom of my boat. And if you want to just draw a rectangle, and it's a probably about two fingers high, and two fingers from the, uh, maybe one finger from the side of the painting. Kind of see how long you want it to be. You with me? Doesn't look like much, but um, when we start painting it in, it's gonna come alive. And then if you look at the, the sailboat, um, the front, what's the front called? The stern, I think, the stern in the boat. If you look at the stern, it's like a elongated triangle coming out the side of the boat. And then the boat, that's fancy, huh? I think that's what it's called. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Y'all Google it real quick. Hope I'm not making a extra. <laughs> but the bow of the bow is just a smaller triangle on the other side. So basically, you're just kind of playing around with the straight, the shape of the rectangle. Y'all with me? Now, what about that big triangle in the top? So it's just a really big triangle. And the best way I can say it is that we want it to go up into the moonlight. So you might want to start into the moonlight or the sun as the point, and we're gonna make a big triangle and then we're gonna split it in half. So 
So I just drew a big triangle and then I'm gonna draw a line towards in the middle of it. We're gonna play around with the shape of it as we paint it. So that might be a little bit hard to see. Nothing fancy there, nothing fancy. I'm gonna wait a few minutes for you guys to catch up. Sip a little bit of my wine and get a question or two from Miss Liza May. She has some questions for me. <laughs> Any questions, Liza? <clears throat> Why did you choose to make a sailboat today? Why did I choose a sailboat? Hmm. I wanted to do some relaxing. And I thought that this would be relaxing. And I try to do paintings on Saturday that are gender neutral, meaning that anyone can paint them and they're family friendly. So every Saturday, you will be guaranteed to have a nice family painting um, to do. And this one just caught my eye. I thought it was kind of fun. Any more questions? Do you have one more? Mm -hmm. Do you think you're going to continue doing virtual paint parties in the future after this whole quarantine? After the quarantine is over, will I do virtual paint parties? Or just stick to regular? I think I'll do both because this is really fun. And plus, like, you could be anywhere in your home painting. Like, you could be poolside painting. That would be pretty fun right now. I think people like the comfort of their own homes. So I'll probably still do virtual paint parties. Some people have asked me, like, it's my birthday. Can I do a virtual paint party via Zoom? Or can we do, like, a, in a private space on Facebook? Sure. Like, the possibilities are endless. So... Um, if you want to do one, um, Relicia, um, my friend that does Juice Plus with me, um, which um, helps you stay healthy and helps make sure you have, it bridges the gap between the fruits and vegetables that you should, you are eating and what you should be eating. Um, we were doing meetings in my studio once a month and we're going to get together and do one on, on, uh, on Facebook. So if you have a business that you'd like to promote, Sistine and I. Um, be epic. She was promoting a product and we got together and did some stuff in my studio Why can't we do a virtual paint party and do the same kind of thing and we can give you free samples in your um, In your kit like I'm thinking of all kinds of stuff I could do with their kids Did you guys like the suckers the suckers came from last night actually because I had we did a lollipop grow last night And I thought it would be fun to put a lollipop in the pack and so with smooth sailing I couldn't think of anything clever to put in smooth sailing so I just put another lollipop by the way, happy Easter. Forgot about that. <laughs> I could have been a chocolate bunny in there or something, huh? If I was thinking. Chocolate doesn't travel well, though. It might have no. made a mess in there. Or jelly beans. When last, jelly beans travel well. But I need it individually wrapped. But anyway. Okay. I, I digress. Okay. I'm really stalling so that you guys get caught up with that. And this is the fun part. You're going to watch your sailboat. <laughs> She's going, oh my God, <laughs> come to life. And what we're going to do, we're going to paint the sailboat with the black paint, of course. I'm using my blue candle paintbrush. I am wiping it off with my blue paper towel. I'm going to outline. Okay, this is going to get kind of tricky. You can have a plain old um, sailboat with just a square, like, sail. Or you can get fancy. Pay attention to the reference photo and kind of draw it as you go along, paint it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right over my chalk lines with the black. It was really skinny in the top. Nancy said paparazzi jewelry would love to do a paint Ooh. party. Ooh, I've worked with paparazzi jewelry before. The possibilities are endless. Let's talk, okay? So basically, I am, I'm gonna fill in the gap right there with white to separate the two sails. Actually, I lied, I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> I'm gonna draw a smaller, thinner line to separate the two sails right there. So now I have two triangles. So I'll do two lines down there to separate the sails. It's just a plain old triangle right now. But if I want to make it fancy, when I paint it in, I'll curve this line a little bit and bring it out. And it 
extended to the bow of the boat. I mean, the front of the stern. Right, Liza? I have no idea. You have no idea? You didn't Google it yet? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not making a fool of myself. Now I'm going to paint it in. I don't, I don't go sailboating that much. I'm from Michigan. We didn't sailboat that much. Okay, so I'm painting it in. I really want it dark because it's a silhouette of a paint of a sailboat. And silhouettes are opaque, meaning no light coming through, right? So I am filling it in. I split that big triangle up into two. The front of the boat is called a bow and the back of the boat is called a stern. Really? I thought it was the opposite way. Are you sure? That's what Google says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. Anyway, I'm just going to call it the front and the back then. <laughs> okay, so I'm filling it up right now. This is where you really pay attention to your reference photo. Like how curvy do you want it to be? Going to fill in the other side. I want a big point at the top. Paint it in. I'm going kind of fast. Because I'm going to leave you out in a few minutes. So you have to finish. <laughs> We've been painting 40 minutes. If you want to paint with the sponge brush, you can. If you want more coverage, because it takes a lot of time to paint with the small paintbrush. If you use a small paint brush, the, the sponge brush though, you have to rinse it off in your water and your hands get kind of yucky. I'll show you what I mean. We're artists, right? So we don't mind getting yucky. You take that sponge brush and you kind of swirl it around in your water. Then you have to squeeze it out a little bit, get that paint off of it. And then you'd have to dry it off on your paper towel because we want it to be opaque because it's black. I'm just telling you in case you don't like using that small paintbrush because we're covering such a large area. Then you'd go and dip it into your black paint, just the tip. Every time we go to paint, we always outline what we're painting and then we fill it in. So you can get a lot more coverage with the sponge brush. But you don't have that much control. See how raggedy my lines are? I'm going to have to go back with the, with the blue handle paintbrush and clean it up a little bit. So if you're getting tired of using brush strokes to fill up the sail, you could go back and use the, the sponge brush. So now since I have black on my brush, I'm cleaning up the lines a little bit, just going right along the edges and making them smooth. If you look at your reference photo, there's some, there's some lines for ropes. I would probably put another coat um, of black paint. I'm going to use a sponge brush because I get better coverage with that. I don't want it to be super dark. I don't want any purple showing through there. For those fine lines, of course, I'm going to have to use the blue handle paintbrush. So I'm going to use that. Pay attention to your reference photo if you want to get that curvature of each line going the right way. If you don't care about that, then just draw it any way you want. And then there's a few just uh, ropes for the seals. Just kind of randomly placed. There's one, I think, going right down the middle part. If you left enough room for that, which you can really show it towards the bottom. And then kind of another line going diagonally. Kind of looks like a rope. But since I'm working with black on my paintbrush, I want to put a little bit of black in the water. And a really important um, use of the black is the shadow right on the bottom of the boat. Now black is so powerful. You guys hear me say this all the time. I can already tell that I have too much black on my paintbrush, so I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel a little bit. And then I'm just going to do a light dusting of black 
right below. And I wiped too much off, so I'm going back into my black again, wiping it off a little bit. I'm getting that shadow in the water. Very, very careful with the black. And if you put too much black, um, I love painting with acrylic paints because they're easy to fix. If you put too much black, just go back into your purple and blend it out a little bit. Isn't that fun? So if you look at the black in the water, it's like a long line, a shorter line, a shorter line, and a shorter line, right? So I have a long line first, then I'm gonna put a little shorter line in the water, then another shorter line, and then another shorter line, and another shorter line, and then a little tiny line. And then I'm gonna go back. I'm not even dipping in my water, I'm just wiping off on my paper towel. I'm going back into my, my purple paint and I'm softening up that line a little bit because I don't want it to look so straightened, okay? So look, I, I think I took you like 95% through this painting. It is 45 minutes past the hour. I don't know, I'm at six o'clock, right? <laughs> so what I would do um, to finish up my painting, I would smooth out these lines a little bit more because it's looking a little bit stripy. It could be the way the, the light's hitting it. And I would also um, make sure I have all the colors in the water. Like I don't see enough yellow. I'm gonna put, I put like a little bit more yellow in my water. Maybe a little bit more pink. And then maybe a little bit more white. But pay attention to your reference photo. Just finish up the little details, blending and everything. And don't forget to sign your masterpiece. That's the most important part. You might think it's not, you might think, oh, it doesn't look so good. But believe me, it's a valuable piece. It's a representation of who you are in this moment and somebody's gonna be fighting over this painting one day. You can sign your painting on the side, maybe in black with a marker or with the black, um, 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 with your paintbrush or maybe on the back. Do not forget to put the year on there. Um, I hope you enjoyed doing this painting. I really enjoyed it. I hope it was soothing. I want you to turn your music up, fill your wine glass up, enjoy putting the details on this painting and my most rewarding part of the whole experience is looking at your finished product so please make sure you post please make sure you tag me please make sure you be safe um, stay at home um, do what we're supposed to do and um, enjoy your easter weekend thank you so much everybody take care Liza, show your face <laughs> she was trying to get out of it without showing her face Ha <laughs> ha